Welcome to the I Create Daily Podcast. I'm Leora Alderson. And I'm Devani Alderson. We're your co-hosts on this journey of creativity and productivity. I Create Daily is for artists in every genre of creating, from musicians to writers, crafters to inventors, bloggers to entrepreneurs. I Create Daily is a movement for creators serious about your art. If you're into creating anything, this podcast is definitely for you. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey. Hi, this is Leora. And I'm Devani. And this is one of our I Create Daily Coffee Break sessions where Devani and I share conversations, uh, thoughts, ideas. And today it is about social media scheduling and how we schedule our content across and distribute it online. We talked about in a previous coffee break, probably the one you heard last, about how we create content and kind of how we um, manage tasks between us. And then we mentioned that we would talk about how we distribute it onto social media. So with I Create Daily, we have a lot of social media properties, including Facebook groups and um, the public profile. So we have the Facebook page, the Pinterest profile, the Instagram account, Twitter, and then we have two Facebook groups. So our Facebook groups get the content first and we have a paid 90 day challenge group, mastermind group, and it is attached to the 90 day goals journal. If you buy a journal, you have the option to join a mastermind group and they get a lot of the articles and memes and content first. They're the first sort of uh, group that gets exclusive content. They see it basically the day after we publish it and then and they see it through an email and a um facebook facebook, post. facebook group posting and so and it helps track the 90 days process that we go through with them as well as provides a place for our members to post their intentions for the day and their goals for the day um, and review an accountability yeah. process and any conversation or struggles or wins or successes that they've had through the journey or things they just want to share about what they're working on or their life. Um, the second group we have, the content is about a week behind. And so they're getting an article from the previous week that the 90 day journal folks have gotten, but it's a different intro. Sometimes it's a different image. Um, so it still feels like exclusive content for them. And <clears throat> we also share our podcast there and um, coffee breaks. You'll probably, if you're in that group, you will see it. it's a free group for anybody who's a creative who wants to join a support network and accountability group to join. And there's a lot of people sharing their photos, their work processes and stories and who they are. Yeah, their questions, group. their struggles, yeah. their gains, their wins and losses. Just a little bit of a correction on the exclusive. Because if we're publishing it on our website, then it's not exclusive to our members uh, exactly because once it's published, it's also available to the public. Right. But it is really exclusive from the standpoint of just serving it to them directly. And they have direct contact um, access to us via email replies. Uh, and like you said, they're the first ones to, like before we publish it to our public Facebook page. Right. And and the conversation around it is is the biggest part is the um, working through any struggles that they have with the content. The, that's really the exclusive part is that we work through a lot of their challenges and whatnot. And, you know, and we struggled with that for a while because we were putting out daily new um, articles uh, as emails to our uh, closed group that are the people who have purchased. You might journey. want to sit forward. Sometimes Sorry, when you sit thank back, you. it's hard. Yeah, yeah. thank you. That uh, to our people who had purchased the 90 day goals journal. And then we realized that that's still a pretty small group because mm -hmm. we haven't been actively working hard on promoting that we've been instead actively working hard on creating our content and growing this podcast as well as still running and managing our other sites and businesses. Um, so we decided that uh, it didn't make sense to spend so much time and energy put uh, or into um, content for a small group when it is that it could benefit so many more people if it were on our website and would help our website to grow. So the struggle was trying to figure out how to also still make it special for the group. Yeah. And I think that the way that's done is that, like you said, we have the Facebook group where we have accountability opportunities, conversations, mm -hmm. postings, question and answers. We're available to people 
uh, for any of the questions that you may have, as well as spontaneous coaching sessions yeah. on an as needed basis. And that's in the 90 day goals journal. And it also follows the journal. Whereas in the larger group for just any creative who wants to join, it does not follow any 90 day structure. So the group also fall the, the 90 day journal group follows a specific structure and we have milestones. Like it's the 80th day recently. We just had our 80th day of the second quarter of this year. And so it, it really follows the journal process as well. And I, but I think that from the standpoint of benefit to our audience, it is that the process is doing yeah. is what's important. You know, how yeah. do you, you plan that out and, uh, do it in a way that's kind of cohesive that is the circular virality mm -hmm. that brendan bashard talks about where one thing leads to the other leads to the other yeah things. so it starts out on our website we have the content we publish it to the website it then goes into our get response system and it goes into the respective email list so we have the 90 day journal email list and then we have the main group email list and so whatever respective group it needs to goes to and then it gets scheduled into one of the facebook pages uh sorry facebook groups one of the closed groups we have and then about a week later that content will be on all the public social medias so the public Twitter, the Instagram, Facebook page, and our Pinterest account. Um, all the public social medias I schedule pretty much a week to a week and a half in advance. So any, any new content is um, done basically the prior couple weeks. So, and we also share a lot of our audience content. So if the things that our group members share in the groups, um, we have, um, posted and promoted because we really want to become a platform that helps not just inspire, but also bring awareness to creators like you guys who share your work. And we want to be a resource where you can get some traffic to your blog, to your Facebook page, to your profile, uh, wherever you post your work. We want to be able to give that to the community as well, because the biggest struggle with so many creators who aren't super out there in their promotion or they're at the early stage is getting their name out there. And so we want to build all these platforms as also a way to give back to the creator community. That's right. Helping them, helping our platform elevate them yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, so some of the tools, wait, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that the, in terms of the content distribution, we have a couple articles on iCreate Daily website, mm -hmm. iCreateDaily.com that talk about content distribution strategies as well as um, repurposing of content. Yeah. And so it's like the, the, the seed or the tree that bears the fruit essentially is the website mm -hmm. and then also the podcast. And so they each, you know, it's like two trees in the orchard and then they're bearing the fruit that gets shared to all the social sites and they become the anchors. Like you said in a recent um, article. article as well, yeah. our home online yeah. is our website. Um, and then we share all that to the social sites, but the source of the content itself is the website and then the podcast yeah. and they interlink beautifully between each other. Yeah. And yeah, that was well put. And we'll link those articles below in, in, on the website. Um, tools, as far as tools, Facebook has its own scheduling systems. So I just use that. I'm, I'm not going to pay for a scheduling system when I can just do all, all of that within the group and on Facebook just, and I can put some screenshots. If you guys are new to all this stuff, I can put some screenshots in the description so that you know what I'm talking about when I say I schedule all this stuff. Um, for Instagram scheduling, I use Grum, G-R-U-M, Grum.co. It is currently closed to any new um, subscribers, unfortunately, but there are things like Latergram that also schedule to your Instagram account, and so I'll link that. Um, for Pinterest, we use Tailwind and it schedules all our pins and we have an entire process with that. Um, that could be its own coffee break. They could be. Yeah. Well, and just to describe briefly for those who aren't as familiar with it, like scheduling basically means you can batch the, uh, you still have to put in the links of the yeah. content and the intro text of a post, mm -hmm. like a Facebook post. Yeah. yeah. But by scheduling it, instead of doing one today and one tomorrow, yeah. and one, you can do like, 10 um you know all at once right yeah so i spend about an hour um per platform doing about a week and a half of content in advance and 
I could do it quicker by just pulling a quote. Sometimes it takes quicker because sometimes I'll just pull a quote from the article and post it with the link and that's it. Sometimes I'll get a lot more creative with the intro and, you know, so it depends on how um, creative I'm being that day in the process. So you can play around with that. But generally scheduling a week and a half of content um, takes about an hour to do. So that gives you um, a time frame to start with. It might be slower, it might be longer. It depends on how creative you want to get with all of that. And I think the biggest, I think the most important part is remembering why you're sharing a piece of content because sharing for a business is different than just being a personal profile online. You're not just going to randomly post stuff that comes to your mind. You're going to have a purpose. You want to be offering value. So that's something important to think about as well. Yeah. And our biggest value is helping people accomplish goals and inspiring them to keep moving forward every day. I create daily. And so that's what all our content focuses on Yeah. from the podcast to the articles, to the social media posts. Yeah. And from our, on our website, it's, it's really big, big, big on mindset. Yeah. Um, and the daily creating process. And like you said, Devani setting goals. Um, and our recent uh, slogan is the day is the way. Yes. So. The day is the way. So use the bull by the horns, which okay. we actually have a coffee break. On. Yes. Um, <laughs> and I think that's, I use buffer for Twitter and Buffer has a free option. So um, and you used to use the Facebook scheduler, but you decided that it was not worth the extra expense for what it, the benefit it, it provided over Facebook's own scheduling yeah. system. Yeah. I used to use um, meet Edgar for everything, but it has some limitations where um, it, it would recycle content, which is really cool. I love the people behind it. They're great, but it just was not working for what we were looking to do and the way we were looking to use social media. We want to use it in a way that grows a community and not just look like we're automating all this stuff because we do go in and we respond to comments real time. Um, we want to cultivate a community of creators. Yeah. We don't just want to automate everything. Right. And so, um, yeah, we stopped using that and it's also pricey. So, you know, just cut back on that. And right. Facebook has a scheduler. Right. So. And in terms of all the social platforms, the one that's bringing the most traffic organically for us is Pinterest, right? Yes. Pinterest is bringing us the most traffic. We had a friend of ours who's also a business owner and a website uh, content creator. And she was talking about all the success she was getting on Pinterest. She has a garden website. And so, and so she was uh, talking to us on Skype, like, you guys got to do Pinterest. You got to do Pinterest. But we were really on a Facebook ads track. And so we were like, all right, all right, we'll get to Pinterest. We'll get to Pinterest. And so we started getting to Pinterest and we noticed a huge increase in organic traffic. We weren't paying like on Facebook, the prices are getting higher. It's still the cheapest form of marketing, but it's still, you know, getting more expensive um, as more people are getting on the platform. And with Pinterest, they really want to drive people to the original content creator website. And so when you post graphics and visuals and you use the proper hashtags and the proper descriptions you can really gain good traction and so while you might not think it's a really fun site to build a community it is a really fun site to gain traffic which is what you really want yes. and it gets to be it feels technical when you want to be the artist and yet what you also want is you want a reliable source of people coming to your website and i think that's really important yeah definitely so. I hope this is helpful. Let us know. Send us an email, creators at iCreateDaily.com. If you have any questions or need any clarification on anything we discussed or would have a topic that you would like us to talk about, we'd, we'd love to hear from you. All right. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks so much for joining us for the I Create Daily podcast. Please let us know what creatives you would like us to interview and what topics you would be interested in hearing more about. And if you enjoyed this show, please leave a review on iTunes. We value your feedback. We read all the reviews and it just helps us get the word out on the I Create Daily podcast. Thank you so much. Thanks so much.